time to talk a little NBA action. And the Summer League is what everybody's talking about right now. The Magic shutting down Palo in the Summer League here, Kevin. Is this a good move, a bad move? And also, the odds shift doesn't even make any sense. It, it, it's so, so bizarre. Now, yesterday, you and I took a quick look at those Summer League title odds. The Magic, a 2-0 team, they were favored to beat the Thunder. They went from a 1.5-point favorite to a 4.5-point dog. They did cover the 4.5. I don't know if anybody can be worth 5 points in a Summer League game, but apparently Paolo was. So that, all of a sudden, again, messes up their chances to win this Summer League title. But I also... Don't you want to see how Paolo lines up against Chet if you're the Magic? Like, if Chet goes out there, pins his shot a bunch of time, gives him buckets, it's not like you take the pick back. Okay, a couple of fans will be tweeting in disarray, but are you telling me the front office would lack confidence? Are you telling me Paolo would be distraught? What if it goes the other way? I mean, we've seen our guy Kenny Lofton Jr. body Chet in the post. Paolo's got a big body. What if he won that match up there? It's just one of those things on where if you would have told me, right, without the game result, hey, Paolo's back to the favorite, I would say, Psh, he must have been phenomenal. What, did he score 30? Was he just giving Chet the business? How he won was ultimately benched and okay with it, I don't like. And two, why he's back to the favorite makes no sense at all. I got to question this because we talk about the NBA. This is the summer league, right? It could be very easy for the NBA to be like, yeah, the, the teams work out by themselves. There's no cameras. They have their scrimmages. They get better in the offseason. Then we see them once they show up in the preseason training camp and on towards the regular season. I got to tell you, though, if you are the NBA, you have a game on where you're center stage in the summer outside of Major League Baseball at this point, where you have your number one pick and your number two pick up set to be on national television. That's ratings. Ratings pay the bills. This is what you sell to next year when you say to yourself, okay, or the year after that. Hey, SPN. Hey, NBC. Hey, CBS. You want this package in the summer? Look what happens when our young superstars play and look at the ratings. That equates to dollar signs. And you're right. If you're Paolo Boncaro, does this get seen because it, it wasn't his decision? He didn't go to the mm -hmm. front office, Kevin, for the Orlando Magic and say, hey, you know what? I don't really feel like giving it a go. I don't want to be embarrassed tonight, and I had a couple good games. Let's just leave it on a good note. You're trying to tell me that this guy knows he was going to go out on a national stage and play against a guy that people were telling him that guy was better than you are or vice versa? This was a big miss by the NBA because I know even we were talking about it yesterday. Tune in tonight to this game. Catch these two guys go head-to-head, -head, and the NBA didn't provide that to you. I think now, and so it's such a good point by you, they kind of have to set the scenario where the first game of Vegas Summer League at night has to be the, the team that picks first and the team that picks second. Like, I can't believe that they, and I don't think this is, like, oh, they left themselves vulnerable by making it the third game. I mean, that's it's so ridiculous. And again, if they would have shut Paolo down after this game, that's fine. We have been warning people all summer league long, hey, guys are going to get shut down. So the fact that Ben Caro didn't finish it out, I understand. To be shut down before this game was disappointing. It really does. I'm not trying to be funny. It comes off cowardly as well. And how it results him in being the favorite for the Rookie of the Year award, Donnie, <laughs> makes just no sense. No, it certainly doesn't at all. As we welcome in the radio audience here in on a Tuesday morning, Sirius XM Channel 159 on the Sports Grid Network. It's Sonny Kevin talking a little NBA action here in hour number two of the early line. But I do want to move forward here because Summer League, it doesn't last that long. Quite frankly, it's going to be over in about a week's time frame as we move forward to the regular season. DeAndre Ayton of the Phoenix Suns, their number one overall pick, who they decided didn't want to re-sign him. And it's not as if, Kevin, as we looked at that situation in Phoenix, to say he's not a good basketball player. He's a very good basketball player. But this is one of those key pieces in the domino chain of the NBA all season that needs to move forward before we get answers on Kyrie and KD. Do we have any information coming forward here on where DeAndre Ayton is possibly going and where we're looking to send him? Yeah, this is a, a massive piece of news for a couple of different reasons. So the Pacers want to sign DeAndre Ayton. It's likely going to be done as a sign and trade, but it seems as if the holdup right now is Malcolm Brogdon clearing a physical, one he was supposed to take yesterday. And by the way, I'd be a little concerned right now because if he took it yesterday, we should have heard that he passed it with flying colors. A little bit odd, a little bit ominous, but the expectation is that when that is all done, finished, and finalized, 
The Pacers will move forward in bringing in DeAndre Ayton. Now, that on its own is very interesting. He will be 24 at the start of next season, paired with Tyrese Halliburton. Everybody's very excited about Benedict Matherin, who they selected at sixth overall from Arizona this year. That'll be a young, exciting core. Probably won't win a lot of basketball games, but they'll be fun to bet on, fun to watch throughout the season. But to me, if all of a sudden Ayton is moved to Indiana with minimal assets coming back to Phoenix... I don't know how the Suns have enough to execute a Kevin Durant deal. And people have been trying to tell me, well, listen, if KD chooses the Suns, he goes to the Suns. I am sorry, Donnie, but I've seen nothing from the Nets that say they will acquiesce those demands. They are not just going to take whatever the best the Suns have to offer is and allow KD to get his wishes. Four years on the deal, a top seven player in the NBA. If the Suns don't have enough, I don't think he lands in Phoenix. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one to watch the way through and also where KD ends up landing here. Is it better odds now that he could go back to the Nets or could he be on the move? Hopefully we find out over the next few days and not few weeks here. But we got a lot more to go over today on the early line. It's Donnie and Kevin in the morning. Make sure you come back along with us right here on Sirius XM Channel 159. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? McAfee show. What did you think of the young wide receiver? What did you think of Watson? What did you think of Sammy? What do you think about uh, going into the season? Any thoughts on what you're going to have to focus on or anything like that? Definitely looked apart. All three of them. All three of the guys we drafted all, uh, you know, have, have physical gifts. Obviously, the top two picks are all uh, bigger, um, Dobbs and Watson. But, uh, but the seventh round pick got a lot of stuff to him. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. People still don't buy this team's going to be any good. And we got gifts in the last two years to get low win totals. The people said, ah, Derek Carr sucks. Thank you. I've cashed both over bets on the, on the Raiders win total. I'm coming back in again today, this year with the over on the Raiders win total. But I'm going to be more heavily committed to the team because I think the team's got real playoff potential. The Bostonian versus the book. Fantasy Sports Today. All right, now let's go to the outfield, and we'll start off with Mike Trout, who looked like he was on his way to a fantasy MVP season, but my gosh, he's in the worst slump of his career right now, George, over the last month. Giancarlo Stanton will start. He, of course, plays for the Yankees. Aaron Judge, no question. And then Shohei Otani, and that's really who everyone will want to see play on Tuesday night. Yeah, but Otani was voted in as a pitcher and the DH, right? The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. 56 and 29. I understand everyone's enamored with the Yankees. But remember, uh, the Astros uh, are rolling in their division. They got 56 oh. wins, and they seem to be able to beat the Yankees every time they turn around. I mean, they beat them last week. Now they're going to play them again next Thursday when they come out of the break. That's the team I'm worried about. I'm not worried about the Boston Red Sox. The Sports Grid Network. Everybody loves a top 10. 
Everybody loves the chance to rank, whether it be coaches or players, whether it's the NBA, the MLB, or perhaps even the NFL. Because the NFL, when it comes to rankings, it is always the quarterback rankings that dominate. And I could give you my top 10. We can give you Donnie's top 10. But how about a top 10 that catches the headline as it was drawn up by 50 different executives, coaches, and players around the NFL? It looks like another vaunted straw poll from the folks over at ESPN. But again, this grabs the attention because this was not done by, you know, analysts or people within the media. This is done by people around the league. And there were some notable admissions and there were certainly some interesting rankings. What we've provided here today is that list of 10 and the MVP odds next to each one of these names. The top quarterback on the marquee was Aaron Rodgers. That top five was rounded out with Mahomes, Josh Allen in front of Tom Brady, Tom at four, and Joe Burrow at five. Let's start there, Donnie. The top five quarterbacks, again, on this list here, ranked by execs, coaches, and players. What caught your attention? Of the top five? Or mm -hmm. just the entire ten? Yeah, top five for the me. Top five. Aaron Rodgers is... To me, Aaron Rodgers overall right now is the best quarterback. But quite frankly, Patrick Mahomes for me is the quarterback that I would actually go with if I needed to start a franchise. Josh Allen makes sense. Tom Brady makes sense. I think the guy getting a lot of push here is Joe Burrow. Good young quarterback. Played extremely well down the stretch last year. Got his team into the Super Bowl. Quite frankly, had the lead late in that game, and they probably should have won a Super Bowl. But I think that elevation of Joe Burrow into a top five quarterback, little bit premature for me. It feels very strong. It feels very, very strong to move Burrow up to that point there, especially when you factor in the guy behind him is Matthew Stafford. Burrow has somehow covered himself in more glory in a losing effort in the Super Bowl than Matthew Stafford, who won that Super Bowl. Let's not forget that MVP race this year was Rodgers, Brady, and Stafford for a lot of people, throughout the majority of that season, a quarterback's award, typically. It was not Joe Burrow, who did come away with silverware, but that was the comeback player of the year trophy. Now, I understand there's some projection done by this, but Burrow moves a little bit too far up those rankings for me. And again, when you line it up with the MVP market, though, it, it, there are a lot of similarities here on the FanDuel Sportsbook compared to the way this top 10 is. The difference, I guess, though, is that Allen has remained on his own spot compared to everybody else. There's a lot of guys with tied odds throughout the odds to win MVP. But Josh Allen ranked third on that top five because this is what caught my eye. In front of Tom Brady, Josh Allen 7-1 to one to win MVP. We've talked about it a lot. The Bills not only favored to win the AFC, but favored to win the Super Bowl it just is becoming clearer by the day that this is the Buffalo Bills season for a lot of people. They are going to be the most popular pick for a lot of people. And the biggest reason, great defense, great coach, great skill players, all that, is people firmly believe that Josh Allen is that guy. He really is that guy. And you know me. I mean, I had the jerseys. I was all Josh allen up last year. And it's the team that we're mm -hmm. expecting to take that next step here. Where maybe instead of playing on the road in Kansas City, you get that game at home as an AFC championship contender here. And you can move towards the Super Bowl. But also a team that's set up to win. As that's what we're looking at, right? So if you look at the top guys in this order, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, those guys are expected to win. Josh Allen has a very good Buffalo Bills team. doesn't matter if Tyreek Hill is off of the Kansas City Chiefs. We expect Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid still to have a dynamic offense and a very good season. Tom Brady down there with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Everybody on their team is always re-signed and ready at an all-pro level caliber. And that's going to be a fact. And also, Aaron Rodgers at 10-1. to 1. But if we're looking for one of those guys with that explosive trajectory that we're looking to take the next step, because quite frankly, when you look at taking the next step, Patrick Mahomes, he already took the next step. Tom Brady, of course, he's already taken the next step. Same thing with Aaron Rodgers. So when you look at Josh Allen, you're waiting for his moment, right? And also keep in mind, mm -hmm. the MVP is not a culmination of the year, Kevin. It's one through 17. And if you're telling me right now that the Buffalo Bills are expected to win the AFC, i got to tell you right now, if there's a number one seed when it's all said and done after week 18 in the NFL, 
he's probably going to be the MVP because he had a very good season unless, you know, something catastrophic happened where they were to get a backup quarterback like Nick mm. Foles with the Eagles. We're not expecting that. But if they have a very good season as the number one overall seed, that means Josh Allen was probably spectacular. Yeah, certainly so. Now, we look at the first five. The thing with six through ten, what catches the eye for a lot of people is not anybody that's on the list, but it's who's off the list. We're talking MVPs. The last five years, there's been four winners. Rodgers has two of them. He checks in at one. Mahomes has one of them. Checks in at two. Tom has one of them. He checks in at four. And then there's Lamar Jackson. Not inside the top ten. Sometimes I wonder if I pulled up recent NFL trivia, would people just fall all over themselves trying to remember that an MVP award was won by Lamar Jackson. We constantly hear playoffs, playoffs, playoffs with Lamar. Please tell me all of the playoff moments of Justin Herbert's career. Go ahead and tell me all the unbelievable playoff moments of Dak Prescott's career. And the list does go on. I don't understand why Lamar ja- and And by the way, by the way, I'm almost maybe glaring over the, the biggest and most ridiculous name to be in front of him. A guy that's never e- that didn't play a single snap last year in Deshaun Watson. There are three to four names you could argue Watson deserves placement in front of Donnie. And yet, kind of the way things go, execs and coaches and maybe even players, it seems, around the league not showing respect to Lamar Jackson. Now, if we take a look, and I'll play the devil's advocate here in the top 10, I do agree. Like, Deshaun Watson shouldn't be in the top 10. You can't just say, all right, well, he played really well two years ago, which they went 4-12 and for the Houston Texans, sat out the entire last season, and not necessarily by his own volition. It was because the NFL didn't know what to do, the Houston Texans didn't know what to do, and Deshaun Watson didn't want to play football. So now him coming into the 2022 season listed in the top 10 is hilarious because as this reads, Kevin, this isn't, who would you like to have your as your quarterback without any preferences here? Oh, you, everybody gets to make up different guidelines here. It reads as 2022. Who are you coming into the season? 2022, give me your top 10. The fact that the Sean Watson is on there is comical. Now, if you want to argue Lamar Jackson should be in that top 10, there's somebody that you have to take out. And like, quite frankly, it might be a Deshaun Watson. I see people all across the social media. Ah, take Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott's a very good quarterback in the NFL. I would still have him in the top 10. But if you're looking at last year, heading into this year, and we're talking about the wide receiving core being extremely questionable here for the Ravens and them being so injured last year as if they're not going to be injured again, they're going to have a complete season and everything's going to go fine. Lamar Jackson finished 25th in the NFL last year in passing yards, 23rd overall in passing touchdowns tied for 19th in interceptions, and a QBR rating that lasted 17th. None of those statistical metrics are even close to being a top-10 quarterback. Now, the argument for me is not, do I think this, do I think Lamar Jackson can be a top-10 quarterback this year? Absolutely, I do. The talent obviously is there, but I can see somebody trying to punch holes in the argument saying, all right, this isn't what have you done for a culmination of your career. What do I think you're going to do in your offense, and will you be a top-10 quarterback here in 2022? Yeah, but the problem is, and people have this problem with Cam forever, is you give me if if you give me just passing touchdowns and completion percentage and I, and QBR and all the right, I listen. He is who he is because he is the best athlete the quarterback position has ever seen. When he won MVP, he ran for twelve hundred yards. He ran for 1,000 the next year and would have made it 3,000-yard rushing seasons in a row if not for injury. Lamar Jackson is who he is because of what he can do as a runner. By the way, that running ability is how a Josh Allen jumps in front of a Tom Brady. Lamar constantly disrespected, and a 20-1, to to be honest with you, catches my eye when we're talking MVPs coming into this season. That's some top 10 quarterbacks up next. We'll preview Major League Baseball right here on the Early Line. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. 
people are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare bets. they do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full football. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I want to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The Pat McAfee Show. It was it was awesome. It was nuts. Uh, I mean, yeah, I I never imagined that it would be what it is. But uh, it, there were thousands of people chanting, and uh, I was I was pumped up. I, I really couldn't even feel the pain in my uh, the ruptured tendon. I, I was I was walking on it and putting weight on it, even though it yeah it, it, was, it was numb. And I uh, I was I was I was ready. To eat. I could have eaten nails, and I I, I, I was hungry. <laughs> the Sports Grid Network. The early line. A bit of a color splash yesterday across the board at Wimbledon. And it has piqued my interest a little bit. Because Nick Kyrgios now will turn over and at the FanDuel Sportsbook as I believe a 26-27-1 to favorite here to win uh, the U.S. Open. But I find myself saying, hey, if Kyrgios is playing in the Open, he might be apt to turning it on. Because even looking at the final there for Wimbledon, if it was Novak Djokovic versus Rafael Nadal, probably never would have tuned in at all. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. They have been there forever since before Christ. We call that place the ashtray. The Oakland Alameda County Coliseum is a dump. And I mean, they don't even have water in that building. All I know is, is that they need to move to Vegas. But when I talk to the guys in Vegas, I talk to Sherapan and Pharrell, and they say it won't do well in Vegas. I can't see how it wouldn't be an absolute success. You know, this time of year, there's nothing else on. People are still coming to Vegas. The Sports Grid Network. Baseball preview begins. There's a lot of good stuff to get to. The Braves picks back up. Baltimore's looking for their ninth, I can't even believe, ninth consecutive win. Chris Sale returns to the mound. We begin it in order, though, mm. because we've got another doubleheader situation on the board today. And Shane Bieber's going to get the ball at around 1 o'clock East Coast time up against the Chicago White Sox. Bieber, better than minus 150, if only slightly. Total here is an 8. Do you like the Guardians potentially today against the White Sox here with Bieber on the mound? Yeah, they should win fairly easily in this one. If we're taking a look here at some of the matchups, that makes some sense. I mean, Bieber by far is the better pitcher overall. But if I'm trying to take a look at the lineups here to get them matched up, I mean, look, the Chicago White Sox, let's keep it simple here, Kevin, right? If there's a lefty on the mound, you open up the books and say, all right, how can I sort of formulate a way to take the Chicago White Sox in a team total or a money line here? Forget about the season that the White Sox are actually having, but just the matchups, mm-hmm. that makes some sense. But if Bieber, the right-handed pitcher, having a decent season, very good, Kevin, versus lefties and righties, a 257 weighted on base at percentage, pitching to left-handed batters to righties, a 312. ISO power number is very good. We look at this lineup today outside of Jose Abreu, a 361 weighted on base percentage, which is very good against right-handed pitching in 2022. Every single player on that team is a 323 or below. They just don't match up for some reason against right-handed pitching as they do for lefties. Now, if we're taking a look at the anticipated starter here on the opposite side, let me see who we got here for the Chicago White Sox. Looks like it still is going to be Martin. This is an interesting mm-hmm. one. He's got 90 batters, Kevin, he's faced this season. 45 from the left-hand side, 45 from the right-hand side. Take a look at what he does to lefties here. A 182 weighted on base percentage and an ISO power number 
under .1, which is sensational. Let's take a look at what he does to right-handed batters. So a 420 weighted on base percentage and an ISO power number of 231. So you want to load up right-handed batters here, which you're going to get today for the Indians. So I got to tell you, it's leaning towards Bieber, even though it's a pricey price here at minus 152. I don't see any way, shape, or form that even, or even if you wanted to take a look at it yourself, forget about the bullpens in this game. You want to go head to head with this pitching matchup against a right handed pitcher going up against that White Sox lineup. It makes some sense. And I believe the run line here, pricing in right around that probably minus 120 range. So just to be up one mm-hmm. run at the end of five, that's the way I'd go with the Guardians today. Martin's very interesting in that if you look through kind of the game log there, he's had five different outings, but he's had four of them go five innings or more. But he's actually only had two starts. They've used him in long relief this year for the White mm-hmm. Sox. So I always do think that matters, right? If you're trying to line up a guy kind of in how he might be a starter versus, you know, the, the preparation is very different for a pitcher on a day like that. It was his first. Now, it, it's not that he was necessarily significantly better as a starter or worse. He's an interesting guy to follow. A, a young guy here in his rookie season for the White Sox, a big matchup today against the Guardians. Has not seen them yet, even though they're, of course, in the same division. That would be a fun one to follow. They are going up against, obviously, a great pitcher in Shane Bieber. Pirates-Marlins makes the card again yesterday. You know, I know you, you've you often said, and I ask sometimes dogs, it can be hit or miss. And I said yesterday, you thought the Pirates had some value at a plus price. Maybe the same scenario here today with Stratton on the mound? It could be the same scenario because the reason yesterday we picked on this game and said, I think it's a decent shot here for a plus money dog. And quite frankly, I'm not usually that great at picking plus money dogs, but you saw the pitchers basically as a toss up here. You saw the lineup where I thought was actually slightly better from the Pittsburgh Pirates. So those are the type of environments that you want to try to take a shot on because you're not asking to say, well, I'm a plus 136 dog. I'm the better team. No, you're not priced as that way. The other team is better. They're at home. But if you can get that coin flip situation, it's equated Mm -hmm. to this, Kevin. Heads or tails, right? If I told you I'm going to give you plus 126 on heads, you say I- I'll play you 150. I'll pay you infinite amount of times here because eventually this is probably going to come back to being 50-50, and I'll take the plus money here. That's why I went on it yesterday. Same similar situation today. Stratton will be on the mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Not a great pitcher, but here's the reasons where sometimes you're still looking towards that dog price. To right-handed batter, Stratton is a right-handed pitcher. He's done very well this year. Weighted on base percentage of 302, an ISO power number of 136, where he gets himself in trouble from the left-hand side. A 400 weighted on base percentage against lefties with an ISO power number of 213, both elevated. But let's take a look at the anticipated lineup today for the Miami Marlins. Leading off, Joey Wendell, a left-handed batter. Great. You saw Sanchez in the five hole. Great. Nobody else, Kevin, in that lineup anticipated to be from the right-hand side, excuse me, from the left-hand side, which is where the damage could get done. Then we flip it over. We already know one of the pitchers that has been faded a lot this year is Castano. High XFIP number. Doesn't get lefties out, even though he's a lefty pitcher. So this is another one of those coin flip type games where I look at that Pittsburgh lineup and I say to myself, I think it's a better lineup once again than the Marlins. So maybe another shot at a plus 126 price today on those Pittsburgh Pirates. Stratton's fascinating to me. So this is a guy who's been around, you know, for six years since 2016. And if you look at this season, he it's been all relief work. Not a single start this year. The most pitches he's thrown on the season is 31 in an outing. And he's not gone above two winnings. But he has 41 career starts under his belt. I have not been able to grab clear indication if he is going to have a legitimate kind of A, go for four innings. Because, again, it's a guy who's done it before in his career, but that was 2019, the last time he started a baseball game. So probably more in that opener role, maybe max out at two innings. Probably depends on that pitch count. But a fascinating situation to bet. Just the opener as a concept to me is a fascinating situation on a day-to-day basis to try and get your money down on there. Something to follow with Pirates Marlins. Reds Yankees begin a series here. An opportunity for the Yanks to bounce back after dropping two in a row, by the way, to the Boston Red Sox. And uh, they're certainly favored to bounce back. Minus 330. (laughs) At home, Garrett Cole gets the ball. Huge, huge number on the New York Yankees there. How do you bet this with a 330 favorite on the on, on the mound? 
Yeah, it's not even really necessarily a parlay piece that you want to look forward to or even like what's the run line on the first five innings? Typically a half is one and a half today. So I would be looking towards the Yankee bats today. Now, Ashcraft hasn't been a bad pitcher here, Kevin, in 2022. And quite frankly, this looks like more of a Remember Tuesdays. It's always like, hey, man, you can get some really bad pitchers. Now, trust me, there are some bad pitchers on this card. But at least <laughs> half of these pitchers are a 100 X fit minus or less today. And if we take a look at Ashcraft, he's right at 103, which is roughly average ERA for 4.35, Sierra number 4.20. It's not disastrous, but you are going up against a New York Yankees lineup that does feast on right-handed pitching. And if we take a look here if on the lineup, right-handed pitcher Ascraft done well against lefties. Kevin, a 233 weighted on base percentage, ISO power number of 056, as you like to say, handling his business. But he hasn't done so well against right-handed bats. A 376 weighted on base percentage, which is elevated, and a slightly elevated ISO power number of 179. Now, when you look it over to the Yankees here, it's that middle of the order that does damage. Take a look at the guys I'm going to list here against right-handed pitching this season in 2022. Aaron Judge, a 411. Rizzo, a 362. Stanton, 354. And how about this? The resurrection of Matt Carpenter, a 508 weighted on base percentage and a 511 ISO power number, which is ridiculous. And quite frankly, I actually hit twice in the last two weeks on Matt Carpenter home run props. Mm -hmm. That's the argument that you have. Can the Reds quell those bats? I'm not so sure. But do I want to pay a minus 330 price in this game? Probably not. It's interesting. I'd love to try and find a way to back Cole because he gave up five uh, earned last time he was in Fenway, which you is did. not Devers. too surprising. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, Devers just right. I mean, we're talking about being way too comfortable against an elite arm, but that's Rafael Devers for you. The thing for Cole, he's been awesome at Yankee Stadium this year. ERA uh, is like a 2.3 compared to a 4.25 on the road this season. And if you look through Cole this year, he's been great at, as a bounce back pitcher. Against Baltimore, gave up five. Next outing, six innings, one earned. Uh, that awful start against Minnesota, next outing, six innings of scoreless baseball. So I would love to try and find a way to back cold under, but I'm not sure how you do it. First five, you're laying a run and a half in the first five innings. It just gets a little tricky there. You have to be creative. The Yankees, again, rightfully priced there. Maybe a stay away. Huge favorite on the board there at minus 330. We mentioned Rafael Devers. His team is in action tonight, and they're hoping that they're getting a big boost because it's Chris Sale for the first time this season getting the ball against Tampa Bay. Love spots like this because they're always interesting to me. For someone like yourself, so not just numbers-based, but kind of what have you given me lately? He's given you nothing lately, Donnie. Do you almost right away almost kind of zoom off Chris Sale? You're just kind of matching up Kluber and nothing else because Sale obviously taking them out for the first time this season. Yeah, here's the here's the the different part of when we take a look at Max Scherzer coming back, you know, working his way through the minor league system after already pitching a major league, you know, first month and a half of the season. He was wonderful. Came back and you talk about pitch counts. His pitch count was like 90 in his first game back. So really, did he have one? The reason I bring this up here is Chris Sale has not pitched yet in 2022 at the major league level, but he does have four starts in the minor league system here. Some of these starts here against like, you know, spring league type guys, also a double A start and a triple A start. The reason why we bring up pitch Pitch counts here is because take a look at his first start was one inning. He gave up one earned run. The second start here, again, against some of those, you know, mixed spring league, rookie league guys, two and two thirds innings, no earned runs. Then he moves up to double A cabin, four innings, one earned run, and then three and two thirds, one earned run at triple A. So you're saying, so, okay, he didn't get blown away in any of those games. Was he ultra dominant? No, he wasn't. But also, Kevin, this isn't like, okay, I just pitched six innings here in AAA ball. I'm ready to go to the major league level. This sounds like I'm not so sure that he even pitching well or not pitching well makes it into or out of the fifth inning. So it would be a fade for me at Chris Sale at this point because typically, what are you betting in a Chris Sale start? Chris Sale on the mound. That's your betting prowess and your betting analysis mm -hmm. here, which I don't know if I'm going to get a full start out of him. So it's a de facto play on the Tampa Bay Rays at about that plus 102 price for me here. Almost a fade of Sale, but not ready to say, hey, this should be an easy victory at all. Expected pitch count around 85. Here's the thing, though. Mm. In the same way we talk about, ah, Cole doesn't love when he has to see Boston. Sure, people remember last year, especially in the postseason. I don't know if Chris Sale's jazzed up to see the Tampa Bay Rays. They've had his number in recent times. A lot more to preview on the baseball slate all after this quick break. Your heart. 
starts racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The Pat McAfee Show. Here we are, Wednesday, July 6, 2022. Baker Mayfield is going to... <gasps> the Carolina Panthers. Wow. Wow. Congrats to the Carolina Panthers, who for another season are taking a shot on who is going to be our franchise quarterback, and we will run the carousel until we find our guy. Maybe it's Baker. Shout out to the Queen City. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. Farrah and I oh. played golf at 110 degrees for four hours yesterday. I didn't sweat at all. You melt. You melt just don't sweat. I was baking, but I was not <laughs> sweating. There was no <laughs> sweat to be had. You cannot sweat when it's 110 degrees in Vegas. Jules is really going to appreciate the graphic. Julian Edlow is soft. <laughs> Hopefully he stays up tonight to watch the replay on sports Because <laughs> I know he's t-shirt. <laughs> Screenshot this and turn this into a t-shirt. We're the Bostonian versus the book. The early line. Down 6-2 early on in this game against the Pinstripes DRS. The Red Sox score nine unanswered to split this series after losing the first two games of the weekend. It'll be interesting to see as we keep on talking about the trade deadline. The Boston Red Sox, the Tampa Bay Rays, the Toronto Blue Jays, all in those crosshairs where, again, not to win the AL East, but show the Yankees, we're not just going to fold up shop. We meet you in September, late September and October. We want to make sure we have a chance. Only on Sports Grid. Back right here on Sports Red, the Baltimore Orioles are back in action. The hottest, I can't even believe what I'm saying here. Hottest team in baseball, eight wins in a row. Who would have thought? They're going for number nine. They're a plus price. You know people are going to bet them today. Uh, we, I'm not saying they're going to be public, but people are going to have some fun. Can they keep the Orioles' momentum going? Nice little plus money in Wrigley Field. Beatable baseball team in the Chicago Cubs. Any juice today, Donnie, as they go for their ninth win in a row on the Baltimore Orioles? I mean, if you, yeah, if we're riding the hot hand, it makes some sense. You just keep on rolling the dice out there to plus money number it against a team playing good baseball, against a Cubs team, quite frankly, that isn't that good here in 2022. But the better pitcher on the mound today is with those Chicago Cubs. If you take a look at Samson on the season, an 84 XFIP minus number, 2.91 ERA, and a very manageable XFIP number, Kevin, of a 3.35. So if I'm looking from that perspective, it does make some sense. But if we flip it over and take a look at Jordan Lyles, who's not a very good pitcher and is not the better pitcher on the mound today, Today, but Jordan Lyles is a right-handed pitcher that is actually getting right-handed batters out this season at a 303 weighted on base percentage and an ISO power number of a 116. Why is that important? He can't get left-handed batters out, Kevin. A 363 weighted on base percentage and an ISO power number of 239. But here's where it helps you out. There's not a lot of left-handed batters in the lineup tonight here for the Chicago Cubs. We're anticipating, look, Ortega, Happ is a switch hitter, and Rivas, not very good. So if you're looking at a pitching matchup, which is in the advantage of the Chicago Cubs, not really taking advantage of the pitching matchup should be the Chicago Cubs against Jordan Lyles. 
it is just incredible that we are even dissecting the Baltimore Orioles in this fashion here. Uh, I know that uh, our guy, the Consig, has kind of been joking around. Do you grab some Orioles to win the American League uh, at 120 to 1? I mean, if they're going to be in the playoffs, if they make the playoffs, it is a good bet no matter what happens from there. Let me ask you this quickly on Baltimore. Yeah. Are they going to be buyers at the deadline? I was asked that question yesterday. I, I don't think they're going to be buyers at the deadline at this point. Why? Because they're not going to win anything this year. And the point of being buyers at deadline is you're going for it. Now, do I think it's one of those psychology experiments you can use on the Orioles going, hey, look, I don't want to stump these guys because nothing is worse than your GM goes, yeah, we're standing pat. This team stinks, actually. We're just getting a little bit lucky now. They don't want to hear that. But if you maybe add a veteran bat, a veteran reliever, maybe a veteran like number four starter, just to show the team that you still care and think they can do it, even though you don't, I think there'll be semi-buyers here just to say, hey, look, guys, you worked hard at this. I'll give you a few extra pieces. Now go out and win it. Wink, wink. Baltimore Orioles, Adelie Rushman for MVP. I mean, I feel like the, the timelines coincide. You got to get Rushman down, some right? help while, while, while you still can. Uh, here's the deal now. Uh, we, we go from Chris Sale coming back. That's interesting. The Baltimore Orioles going for nine in a row catches attention. But I still maintain Braves Mets has my eyes. I, I am fascinated to watch this series play out. The Mets got such a big win yesterday for the state of the series. Can't be swept. Probably going to be the closest line this series will offer. And one of your favorites, Strider, gets the ball. The favorite for now for NL Rookie of the Year. His teammate in Harris is right behind his heels. It's Peterson who gets the ball for the New York Mets. Total here, eight and a half. Certainly expecting maybe a couple of more runs today without the Max versus Max battle. Braves, Mets, what do you see? This is how big that win was yesterday, right, for the New York Mets and getting Max Scherzer to beat Max Fried, And you can at least decompress because if you lose the series, ah, so what? When we have our top guys out here, we can dominate. Well, Spencer Strider's been absolutely sensational in 2022. And if you haven't watched him pitch, how about the strikeout rating? 39% of the batters he faces strike out. That is outrageous. Like, you're trying to talk about getting, like, a rally started when roughly 40% of your batters don't even put the ball in play. That's outstanding. An XFIP minus number, the best on the card today at a 62, an ERA of 2.60, and a Sierra number of 2.38. Good luck getting any runs against the guy. Now, I figured out the formula here for myself, Kevin. Taking Spencer Strider, you know, just in overall games itself. Stay away. He had like one bad start this year, and that's the game that I actually took him. Outside of that, he's been absolutely flawless. So you look at this price here. It's really expensive on the Atlanta Braves, but it should be. But also, if we're taking a look at a top 10 pitcher on the card today, how about David Peterson, a 90 X fit minus number, and his manageable Sierra 3.70. They're not going to be blown away in this game on the scoreboard, but quite frankly, the Mets batters, Kevin, might just be blown away today at the plate. Yeah, the Mets have been struggling a little bit. I'll tell you, though, it's an interesting spot. The projection numbers point towards an under on Strider. The idea, though, typically is the number's going to get a little overjuiced when you get back-to-back -back performances yeah. that give you six innings, 11 Ks, six innings, 12 Ks, which is, our, which is the last two for Strider. He's going up against a team with the fourth fewest strikeouts on a per-game basis in the New York Mets. But also, one of those games was against the St. Louis Cardinals, who are also kind of top 10 and not striking out as a team, and he struck out 12. The 7.5 right now, you need it to be 7.5, but it's minus 144. You're paying a lot of juice to fade a guy who is piping hot. It is a tough spot to sell. The juice truck comes down a little bit, minus 130. Maybe you feel a little more comfortable there. It's something I'll be looking at but I can't guarantee I'm on because even if the projections are there, Strider has just been so dominant. Sometimes you don't want to get in front of a train like that. Brewers twins, interesting little cross central matchup here features a minus 140 number, give or take on Minnesota at a total of nine as the twins are home for this baseball game and minus 120 to the over. So it looks like a strong expectation of runs here today between these two ball clubs. Twins, Brewers, you find any value in this game? 
If we're taking a look from a team total perspective, you're probably going to be leaning on the Minnesota Twins. But as always, that, you know, mental block that I have is you better get these runs early and often because if this game is two to one with a Brewers lead heading into the seventh inning, you can just turn off your TV, your laptop, or your smartphone and head to bed because you lost that wager because in comes Williams and Hayter. But let's take a look at Jason Alexander on the mound today. We just talked about a young pitcher in Spencer Strider striking at close to 40% of the batters that he faced this year. If you take a look at Alexander, the exact polar opposite. He's only striking out 10% of the batters that he's faced, which means productive outs have, forget about home runs and doubles and, you know, singles, productive outs have a legitimate chance because as long as you're putting the ball in play, typically good things happen. We're taking a look at him with a 125 XFIP minus number, which is bad. ERA of close to five, but also the XFIP number, 5.03. That's a little bit elevated. So if we try to take a look at some of the matchups in today's game, Alexander is a right-handed pitcher. He's done well at getting right-handed batters out, but has really struggled Kevin, this year in 2022 at getting the left-handed batter out, a 405 weighted on base percentage in an ISO power number of 222. And if you look at the anticipated lineup tonight going up against right-handed pitching in 2022, looks like we have six or seven, actually seven guys above a 324, which means they could do some damage. But quite frankly, you want to look from the left-hand side. Five of the nine batters tonight that we're looking at will come, whether by switch hitter or just pure left-handed batters. They should do some damage against Alexander early and get him early, Kevin, while you can. Don't worry. Wait for that bullpen to come in here for the Brewers. Fascinating matchup between two teams that do right now hold their division leads. You look, of course, uh, over at Milwaukee. It's just a two-game Every time it feels like, oh, the Brewers are about to kind of make that extension there, the Cardinals, they drop a couple, St. Louis grabs a couple. It's just a two-game gap. The Twins up four on Cleveland, but more importantly, five and a half on the White Sox. Still the hesitation to flip Minnesota to any kind of big number. They are minus price, though. It is now minus 130 on Minnesota. We will see how long that holds. All right, two more games that we want to get to, and I know they're both important, so let me try and move a little bit quicker here. Dodgers-Cardinals, fun series. Mentioned it just that St. Louis was winning a bunch in a row. Well, the Dodgers have been red hot. Dodgers have been red hot, and it is a road game, so it gives a little bit of an opportunity maybe for St. Louis to pull this back, but I don't know who's getting in front of the Dodgers these days. How do you match this one up? Yeah, Libertor, a tough outing last, or excuse me, very good outing last time out, but overall in the season, a 129 XFIP minus number doesn't really strike your fancy. A 5.21 XFIP number and a Sierra number of over five. You get yourself into trouble when you go up against the Dodgers with a pitcher that can't dominate. And quite frankly, the first four guys in that lineup against left-handed pitching in 2022, Mookie Betts, a 379 weighted on base percentage. Trey Turner, a 351. Freddie Freeman, a 359. And Will Smith, a 403. So damage could be done early. It's a nice lineup here for St. Louis. Even though they struggled for about a week, week and a half, they pulled their, uh, you know, belts up or their bootstraps up over the weekend here by winning a couple games against the Philadelphia Phillies. So they come in with a little bit of momentum, but I'm not fading the Dodgers in this spot here. I think their lineup and their bullpen is better, and I think that's going to be enough to play out because Libertor, if he gives you four or five innings of very good baseball, you'll be in this game. But I think he's going to go back to his, let me get four or five innings and three or four earned runs here. Look, again, these are exciting teams to follow here because you've got such a hot Dodger team. But St. Louis has been awesome at home. NL MVP favorite and Paul Goldschmidt there. That's going to be a guy people, I'm sure, on a Dinger Tuesday will have their attention on. But if you're talking Dinger Tuesday, I have a feeling that San Francisco Giants are going to make the card because they are going up against a guy that I feel like each and every time uh, Donnie goes through a slate, he goes, now, hold on a minute. Is this guy still out here in Major League Baseball? Oh, my goodness, he is. And that is none other than Dallas Keuchel. Now, Keuchel last inning, you know, last outing, seven innings, yeah. only three earned runs, didn't give up a home run. I don't know, that screams due to me. He's in San Fran tonight. Is this circle play excitement time here to try and fade Dallas Keuchel once again? Yeah, there is some excitement there. And if we take a look at the uh, weather conditions, they're typically always the same out west here, right? 50, this is the craziest summertime, right? Balmy, 59 degrees at first pitch here, which will dip down to about 55 degrees. That never helps because the ball doesn't travel typically as far in San Francisco. But I got to tell you, like Dallas Keiko, I have 31 pitchers rated on the card today with a minimum of 20 innings in 2022. Dallas Keiko's 24th. 
So he's not even like at the true bottom of the list. So maybe there are some things looking up for Dallas Keuchel at 7.63 ERA, still pitching it. And I'll tell you, the kids out there, like I was a left-hander. I guess I wasn't taught the right routines here, that apparently any left-hander at any time can have a 20-year major league career, regardless of having a 7 ERA. Sounds like Dallas Keuchel right now. How he's pitching in Major League Baseball, I don't know. But you want to take advantage of it, which you're going to have a lot of right-handed batters in the lineup tonight for the San Francisco Giants. Maybe it is just a principal play, but it's kind of funny seeing Dallas Keuchel moving up the ladder despite his 7.6 ERA. The thing with... Keuchel is it just doesn't <laughs> like seven innings of work for him I just feel like the odds are that falls back to the pack and doesn't go his direction as he you know eh, who's lining up on Dallas Keuchel today right that four and a half is the number yeah. he's had 11 starts this year in seven of them the opponent has scored five or more runs so that could be something to factor in as well. A lot of good games on this slate, by the way. One we didn't get to, but just to give you an idea, the Angels at home welcome in the Houston Astros. This is going to be very interesting here because the Astros obviously have been fantastic and the Angels have been the complete opposite. I believe Otani is going to get the ball tomorrow. If we have another scenario, the Angels let's lose, 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 lose. Otani starts. He's unbelievable. They win. Lose, 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 lose. It does continue to strengthen his case. I just wonder if the guy, can he be Cy Young and not MVP? Is that possible? All things to follow and sort through as we take a quick break before Donnie asks you to listen up and closes out the early line. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for one. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get begins. the winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The Brew Crew now have lost four of their last five games, so they can't pull away despite the minus 240 price they're booked with in the NL Central. This is like the bizarro world of the AL East, right, where everybody seems to be really good, including the Baltimore Orioles. And then you take a look at the Brewers and the Cardinals going, we get no pushback from anybody behind us with the Pirates, Cubs, or Reds. So, yeah, sure, we'll go 5-5 five and five over 10, and we'll hang around in this divisional race until August and through yep. September. The Sports Grid Network. The Pat McAfee Show. All these little aliens land, and every ex-football player says, they got no jaw. (laughs) (laughs) Put a helmet on and just start spearing people. It would feel good to make a few tackles. Oh, back in the day, tackles too. You got Ed Reed flying. (laughs) Troy Paul Ma, I go, boom. AJ just leading with the head, everybody. I mean, the future looks bright for us humans. Hey, let's go, humans. Come on. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Haro and $7.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Ohio getting closer, and now the Type C applicants have their moment in the sun. $100,000 for a five-year license and $25,000 for renewal. They'll make that back in profit pretty easily. Elise Technologies, a company that owns a number of liquor by the glass establishments, are applying for proprietor licenses for gambling in their institutions where they also are able to sell lottery tickets. Don't know which ones will be approved and for how much, but the bottom line is Ohio is showing the way ever since Governor DeWine signed the bill and gave the state basically a year to be ready and said, we'll miss out on football this year, which generates significant dollars, but when we come back 
in January 2023. It'll be stronger, more efficient, generating significant tax revenue for the state. And that's exactly what happens. Other states, take a look. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. All right, last segment of the day here for a Tuesday radio on the early line. Got your right side. And also Kevin Walsh bringing that heat from 7 to 9 a.m. before we hand it over to the morning after and Ben Stevens, who I do believe Kevin will be a part of on that first hour of the show. So make sure you stay tuned. Now, things change a lot in our sporting environments, right? You take a look and players come, players go, all-star players retire, and a new crop of all-stars come in. But I don't want to talk about all-stars in the all-star game. I want to talk about names changing here. So make sure you listen up. Be quiet. How about this one? Heinz Field changes his name. So what I say is, what's next year? You know what's next year. This happens. Why? Because money rules the roost in professional sports. It's why players play. Sure, they say, I love the game. I'd play it for free. No, you wouldn't, Dame Lillard. You wouldn't play this sport for free. You have to go out and get a job as opposed to getting paid $60 million a year. It's all about the money, and that's okay. So we take a look at Heinz Field changing its name over to Acrisure Stadium. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? You have to understand, it's about making money. Now, Heinz Field sounds wonderful because it's the only thing we've known there in Pittsburgh after Three Rivers Stadium was old and outdated. You built a new football field. But let's remind ourselves, Heinz Field is named after a ketchup, so it was still a sponsorship here. If we're looking across the landscape, Lambeau Field, Paul Brown Stadium, they're relics right now because the Dallas Cowboys who played in Texas Stadium don't play in Texas Stadium anymore. They play in AT&T Stadium. Philadelphia Eagles played at Veterans Stadium. Now they play at Lincoln Financial Field. It's just a sign of the times here. Get ready. Are we not too far off of Lambeau Field being Toyota Stadium, Yankee Stadium being Ford Stadium, and Fenway Park being sponsored by Snickers? I don't know, but this environment is coming, and sometimes we just have to get used to it here because money is how these people move forward, pay their athletes, and also pad their bank accounts to get that third or fourth vacation home as owners. Just a sign of the times, guys. Get used to it. But you know what? Stay tuned here for the morning after coming up right now on the Sports Grid Network.